And we are back, Odell's Roundtable. And uh, I'm joined by my first guest here. Uh, first guest, very talented um, person, Shay Lawson. Uh, let me just go over a couple things. Let's see, I think she sits on the board for the Atlanta chapter, the Grammys. Is that correct? That is correct. She also has brokered deals for certain clients, dealing with companies in the likes of what, Apple, Converse, Def Jam, EA Sports, I think Warner Brothers, did I name a few? That's I mean, that's just a few. I mean, I, we're not, we're not even going to name all of them. Like I said, we just named a few companies that I know that you would know. Uh, certain clients uh, range from, uh, we got Pimp C to uh, Wallow267. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I love that brother's content, yes, by the way, as great. well, and everything. So Phenomenal. without further ado, I am blessed and very happy to have Shay Lawson here to join me on the round table. How are you? I'm well, thank you for having me. No problem. I mean, so first off, like, uh, tell us a little about yourself. Like, who is Shay Lawson? What does she got going on? I mean, you did it. That was it. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to just, I don't want to double back for the well, people. Well, well let, me ask, <laughs> let me ask you, because I, I, I heard, I wasn't, I'm not, I can't confirm this, but I heard that you might have uh, studied at University of Alabama? No, no, but I do pay dues to the Alumni Association Roll Tide. <laughs> I, w I okay. went to Hampton okay. University. I went to the real HU okay. in Hampton, okay. Virginia. Shout okay. out to all my pirates. Right. Um, okay. However, my dad is from Alabama. He's from a small town outside of Mobile, so I am a faithful. Well, like Florence? Faithful. No, it's a town called Grand Bay. Uh, Grand Bay, okay. Yep, okay. so I'm okay. a faithful Bama fan. Okay, because I, so I got family um, in Alabama and stuff. and I, I actually graduated from Auburn University. Of Ooh, wow. so I was like, I was like, yeah, I was wow. like, let's go ahead and get the conflict see, out see early. Downhill, I was like, so let's, fast. Said, let's just go ahead and get the check, conflict. Check, check. <laughs> oh my god! I said, let's go ahead and get the conflict in early, <laughs> though, because uh, Jay Black and I were talking about this because he was saying he was teasing you, I think, about Ohio State and Alabama or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I just want to check. I just want to see. So, okay, from Alabama. Okay, your pops must be a cool cat if he's from Alabama. Yeah, you absolutely. Right? All you good know. people come from Alabama. You heard that? You heard that? So everybody be trying to say jokes about Alabama, right? That's what I'm talking That's about. A, no, there is a running joke in Cleveland specifically that everybody's grandparents are from Alabama. Like, we're all related secretly. Exactly. I mean, it's the same thing in St. Louis. Like, my dad's from Mississippi, and basically everybody from St. Louis is from Mississippi. See? You know, it's the same thing. That great okay. migration. That's what I'm talking about. So why intellectual property uh, to study that? What, what made you want to do that? Uh, that's not what I originally planned on. I just kind of fell into it. Okay. Um, and it just made sense. And a few of my first consistent clients, um, I, w I really wanted to focus on contracts. Contract law is uh, my specialty. I know that's what I'm good at. But as I was navigating deals, as social media kind of grew and brand partnerships with regular people mm. grew, it became increasingly more important that I help my clients protect their brand and their content and their name as they were also creating content for brands or partnering with other brands who had bigger names. So right. if you are Odell and you're partnering with Nike and you are creating an Instagram post for them, I now need to dive into intellectual property so I can protect your name, so I can protect your logo, so I can say that you own the video, that they can only use it for one particular thing. So it just turned into more than just negotiating contracts and, and looking at the bigger picture. Okay, I like that. You know, and it's funny too because you, know, you talk about the rise of social media and the influencers and the ambassadors and things of that sort, and I bring that up because you know, I'm happy to have you here because you are a professional in the sense that you know, you had to go to school, you had to pass the bar exam yeah. and all that kind of stuff because we are at a time and place now where so many people like, it's eight gazillion billion podcasts, right? Because anybody with a laptop <laughs> and an internet connection can say they have a show, Correct. which I don't knock. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, for me, I just feel like it just makes me raise my bar level, mm -hmm. you know, cream rises to the top, so it just makes me Absolutely. Hon hone in. Um, but it's the same thing with people saying they're a social media influencer, saying they're an ambassador and things <laughs> of that sort. So my question is like, how do you uh, cipher through that because if somebody wants to work with you as opposed to like somebody out here talking and somebody who's actually going to produce and put some work in. Oh, wow. Um, I'm, I'm really particular. And you know what? I'll give you Wallow for an example. Okay. So uh, Wallow and I started working together last year. I actually met him over on Peter Street. Oh, wow. I met Wallow on Peter Street literally two months after he got out of jail. 
Um, if you're not following Wallo, please follow him. He has a phenomenal story. This brother spent 20 years in jail, yeah. got out last year. He has uh, well over 200,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. He recently did the Roots Picnic. He'll be down here in Atlanta to give a TED Talk in October. Okay. Yeah, he's um, okay. he's making moves. No excuses. If he can do it, you can. <laughs> um, but uh, he, and so that's what he said. He came, he... He heard me handling some other business right, right, right. Um, in a lively manner on the phone. <laughs> and so after I got off the phone, he ran up to me. He said, what do you do? Are you a manager? You're a lawyer? Right, and I was right. like, I'm a lawyer. And he was like, I need you. I need you. I got a social yeah. media you've following. Heard that you've heard that a million yeah. times. Yeah. And so I was like, well, let me see your page. And he pulled up his page. Okay. And what was phenomenal about him at the time, he only had 30,000 followers at the time. Only. Um, <laughs> he only had 30,000 followers at the time. But his engagement was off the charts. So mm. that's something that you all need to look at. And that's what I look at as an attorney is you could have 600 followers. Okay. But do you get 400 likes or are you getting five, six, seven likes? Are you getting 20, 30 likes? Mm. Normally, brands look at and target, you should have about 7 to 10% of your followers in engagement. Okay, like so likes and comments? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, comments are more valuable, shares are more valuable than comments. Um, <laughs> so in an order, so everything has a monetary value to it. So that's what I'm looking at because I know that's what brands are looking at. Right, and that's right. how I'm going to negotiate how much it will cost them for you to make this post for them. Okay, man. Listen, y'all. I, I don't know if y'all just got those gems. He was just lightly just tossing out there, you know, like just randomly out there. Um, that's great stuff. But you know, also too, it's funny because I want to know. Like a lot of times, people want to talk about talk about who you work with and all these mm -hmm. companies you work with. I'm intrigued, and I would like to know what are or what types of deals and what type of people the shade walk away from? Like what kind of things, this kind of situation? Because like everybody, everybody knows about, <clears throat> hey, take this job and do this and this and that. Yeah. But like, I think part of the game and part of anything that you do is like knowing when to say no mm -hmm. and knowing when to walk away and say, hey, all money, not good money and things Correct. like that. Like talk about that kind of experience. <laughs> Um, I walk away from anything that compromises my, that's asking me to compromise my values. I'm never going to do shady business, and especially in the entertainment business. There are a lot of people <laughs> doing shady business, but um, that's something that I pride myself by. And at the moment that you ask me to do something questionable, mm -hmm. that you're involved, that I cannot defend you in a way that would be honorable to my integrity. I'll walk away from you. I have a I have a former client who, in fact, I felt like they were living their personal life in a way that would bring my character into question wow. because, you know, as an attorney, they feel like you already, people already feel like attorneys are sharks and grimy right, anyway. Right, right, so right. I don't even need to associate myself with you if you're living grimy because they're going to automatically assume birds of a feather flock together. So I'm automatically, if, right. if I get the inkling, you're not doing good business, I'm done. If you... Um, aren't this sounds so ethereal Say but it's it. the truth if you are not making the world a better place i am blessed that each and every one mm. of my clients is genuinely concerned about making cultural impact i say it all the time i represent trap karaoke okay. and the guy jason who owns it he is very intentional and unapologetic about creating a safe space for black joy mm. Okay. You know, yeah. and so those are the types of people I want to work with and and support when you think, you know, you mentioned Pimp C and, you know, Shannara, right, um, right. you know, um, Chad's wife. She is a phenomenal woman. She is now a single mother navigating a business. She is a woman of color navigating the cannabis industry. She is changing, mm. you know, the landscape all while protecting the legacy of her husband, who, you right. know, is one of the, you know, greatest, you know, country rap tunes, artists of all, <laughs> you know, of all times. Exactly. So those are the people I align myself with when you're doing things that are questionable. All you're correct. All money is not is not good money. I just I just won't do business with you. It'll come back around. I love that. I mean, and that's too, I mean, I like the fact that you said, like, the minute you find that out, like, it's confirmed, like, this person is on this kind of nonsense. Let me just go ahead and hit the, hit the eject button and go ahead and pull out of there. Yeah. Because, you, cause like you said, your name, and it's funny because my brother J-Force here, he would tell me all the time that your name is so important and that your name is going to travel to you. It's going to travel a lot further and a lot quicker than anything else. Like, you think just this post or you think doing something – but your name and the weight it carries or the weight it carries on the bad side, that is what's gonna travel so quick. 
you know what? And it was so funny. I, um, I had a, a client recently who something happened to him in which somebody bad mouthed him. Okay. And so I told him this story about, and this is lit. I had literally just graduated from law school. I had come down here to Atlanta <laughs> and right. I work for a company that I will not even give him the satisfaction of name. Don't do it. However, <laughs> Um, everything was good. Everything was good. I, in true entertainment uh, fashion, I was working for free for him for a number of months just to get myself out there, whatever. Establish a resume. Yep. And then at the moment that I left, this person had a database of over like 75,000 like DJs, record label people, everything, and sent an email out to the entire database and was like, do not deal with Shay Lawson. Whoa. Da, 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 da. So if you Googled at this point in time, if you Googled my name, that was the first thing that would come up because he had Whoa. sent it to a database that big. And I remember like crying and like sobbing and my homeboy worked at um, DTP at the time, Sal, hey Sal. Um, and I called him and he was like, don't worry about it. He was like, if you do good business, that will travel just as fast as this. People will make up their mm. own mind about you. So you just keep doing good business. Don't let this scare you out the industry. Yeah. So, and you know, now. people will throw dirt on your name, you know, in a second, but don't let it, <laughs> don't let it bother you. Hey, you plan it to grow. Listen, that, that, is, that is very true. Uh, I know this uh, from this doing media, doing different <laughs> things. Uh, I always uh, try to focus on like what I'm doing. And, I, and sometimes it gets hard because Jay will tell you, you know, both uh, I'm a fiery Aries. I'm like, hey, who said it? Let's get it. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, let I'm me find him. I, I've never seen an argument I didn't like. Okay, so like, <laughs> let me, let me, who said it? Okay, so, but I had to navigate and uh, learn that like, hey, you know what? Don't even worry about that. Like the yeah. energy and time you're putting into that yeah. makes no sense. Just go out here, create some more content do some more things yeah. so oh, you know okay so I want to talk about how like when I look at uh, you have a lot going on with the Grammys mm -hmm. your practice and also uh, movers and pacers mm -hmm. um, you're very active with that like how are you able to like juggle and put all that time management together because I, I recently I think I saw an interview I, I hope I pronounced the name the brother's name correctly is it Kamar Kane oh Kimar yeah. Kimar okay mm -hmm. I, want, I want to get the yeah. brother's probably want to say his name yeah. correctly but you were talking about on there you said something about like the empty, empty vessel yeah. And I know, like, I've heard, I mean, I use a similar thing with, the, like, the teacup and the saucer. You heard that one? No. It's very similar. It's basically saying how, you know, if you have a teacup, and you have a full teacup, and you have a saucer, you know, everything that spills over into that saucer, you know, I always give freely. You know, I, mm. I, I'll give that to anybody, uh, whether it's help or anything like that. But, you know, if my teacup is empty, it's not spilling over into the saucer. Like, there's nothing I can, I can oh. do. Like, I have, I have to have, fill myself I have to fill that cup up that, Oh. that uh, teacup up you know, and then if it spilled over to the saucer I'll just give it I mean I don't even look back on it and it's funny because Jay walked in the studio talking about the same thing having an empty cup um, so how, how, how do you navigate all that and keep yourself energized Cause like we said I mean we're in a game where people are going to say stuff <laughs> people are going to like how do you how do you balance all of that easy just like you said knowing to say no mm. you know when you are stretched too thin you know when your plate is full you know when you've had enough when you need to shut it down for the night, when you need to take care of yourself, when you need to spend time with your family, when you need to right, right. do whatever, when you need to say no to terrible, greasy studio food, when you need to say <laughs> no to that free open bar, you know, the, right, right, right. the no is going to be your key word in mm -hmm. so many, you know, facets of your professional career, not mm -hmm. just in the entertainment industry, in your, in your personal life, just everything. Um, and when you and I said this the other day on Twitter, okay. that when you take advantage of saying no, it actually give your yeses way more value. Mm. OK, OK, OK. I like that. I like that a lot. It's funny, too. You talk about what you said on Twitter, because one of the reasons I came to like liking your page is I would love those quarter of the days oh you and would that's post. not doing those. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love those because I, I know one of them, um, if I'm not correct, like one of them. It says something. I probably won't say exactly, so you help me out. But it was like, you know, quit with the copy and paste. Uh, your Google search didn't pass the bar exam. Yeah. You know, uh, you had another one talking about, like, uh, learn how to do business with your friends and stay friends. Yeah. And then um, what was the other one? I mean, it's all in that same vein. So I, I like Absolutely. those are some potent things. I mean, like, how did you go about Because I think that's the thing about it, too. It's like you mentioned about the – perception of lawyers and attorneys mm -hmm. and this griminess and things like that. So when I saw that, I was like, man, 
I was like, that, that's some, folk. I mean, it spoke to me where, at a point where I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to, you know, as I grow, look at having an attorney because I think that most people, um, I think you said something about like people will, will be questioning a, a potato salad. Yep. But they won't question the template on Google. <laughs> How do you question potato salad? But you will use anybody's contract that you find anywhere. I just don't get it. Right, right. It, it, and maybe it's common sense to me because I'm an attorney and I, I literally had this conversation earlier today where someone is working with a group of people okay. and the and so she went back to them and said, hey, this is how much it'll cost for us to have a sit down with her while we navigate, like basically their agreement all working together. Okay. Well, the person was like, I don't see the value in spending that much money. I looked on Google and I think we could do it <laughs> ourselves for a lot cheaper. And so... I was like, literally, don't. I said, I said, don't, don't twist their arm. Right, right. You know, for them to get their business together. If you don't want to spend two hundred dollars on the front end to get professional advice to secure your interest in a business, mm. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> like, you know, that's a, a, a very long time ago. I, and and this happens consistently. I almost want to write a post about it. Okay. And for the clients who are who are willing to share their information of how much money they spent on me versus how much money they got. But I'll just give you, without giving you a bunch of details, mm. I um, had somebody pay me 2,500 to pursue a claim against somebody who didn't show up to a club. Okay. And in return, we ended up getting almost 40,000. So, you know, you spent 2,500 on the front end <laughs> right, right, to get right. 40,000 wow. on the back end. And if you told somebody just those numbers up front, like, hey, yeah. you know, it sounds like a pyramid scheme. Hey, <laughs> give me, give me 2,500, <laughs> I'm 40,000. But that's literally how it works as an attorney. It's like, I'm not, it's almost like people take it as um, a strike against themselves if they ask someone else for, for advice. But it's like, just because you go to the dentist doesn't mean you don't know how to brush your teeth. I'm not bringing into uh -oh. question whether uh -oh. you can read or understand this or not. I just can bring a secondary value to the table. So you may have read and understood that, but you only got $100. And now that I'm involved in the table, you got 1000 So it's it's, you know, one of those. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's what she does. And I think that's the thing about it. So you're paying, you know, she like, once again, she's, this is not somebody using jargon like a legal analyst or yeah. this and that. Like, this is an attorney. This is what she does or not. I mean, every day, all day. So as opposed to somebody just winging it and your Google search is not going to flip it and get you that 40000 Yep. So, man. So I want you real quick. To all the people, how they can reach you, how they can get in contact with you, what you got going on, anything you want to share with the people, let them know. Oh, man. Um, well, first and foremost, you can find me everywhere. Shay M. Lawson, S-H-A-Y-M-L-A-W-S-O-N. So Shay M. Lawson on Instagram, Shay M. Lawson on Twitter. Facebook.com backslash Shay M. Lawson and ShayMLawson.com. Definitely take advantage of the website. If you go on there, I have free templates. I have free downloadables. Mm -hmm. Odell mentioned doing business with friends and staying friends. If you give me your email address, I can give you a free template. You will instantly get a free template mm -hmm. of an agreement that you can make between you and your friends when you do that next cool thing together. Um, and, and that's it. That's all I got, all I got going on. I love that. I love that. Last question I want to ask you, Shay. So, like, if you get this, because here at the round table, we talk relationships. We mm -hmm. talk about quality relationships and how you can do it. Give, give us a couple of keys, or Shay's keys, to quality relationships and how you keep them. Wow. Just all, always be the, the same person, no mm -hmm. matter what. If you're ever concerned about a conversation that you're having, if you okay. wouldn't have the conversation in front of the camera, then don't have it, period. Mm. And that's gonna build a lot of relationships. <laughs> it's gonna keep a lot of relationships. It's gonna make you think twice about what you say, how you say it, and when you say it. And and I think um, just communication is always the key to any great relationship. And I feel like that's how I've been able to maintain mine. People know who I am. They don't right. have to question it. They yeah. always know it's good. Listen, man, I, I hope you all enjoy this. I wanna thank you, Shay, thank you. for stopping by. Thank you. Uh, Sister gave some great tips, even though she supports Alabama. We're not. We, 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 we're we're going to look past all that. We're going to look. We're going to look. <laughs> Did past. you guys rank in the ESPN? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Did you? Is, 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 he, is he checking me? Was he? But here, I'll, I'll say this now. You see, you, you step into it now. So, like, I I graduated from Auburn University Montgomery, but see, I grew up in Oklahoma. 
So I'm, I'm more of a Sooner Sooners fan. Sooners fan. Now, oh, okay. I, I, so you glad I, that Trey Young is at the Hawks? Well, yeah, but, but last I checked, um, since I've been alive, Oklahoma has never lost to Alabama. Matter of fact, three How many championships three, have you gotten in your listen, lifetime? We have eight. We have eight. Okay. So How many does Alabama have? Listen, we, I said about head-to-head matchups <laughs> between Oklahoma and I'm just asking. And there's, I'm just you asking. have another guest. You know what? Let's be respectful <laughs> to his time. See, I didn't even want to go down this rabbit hole. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shay. Listen, we're going to be right back with my brother James Lewis. I'm going to blame Jay Black for the whole college football interaction because he started it with the whole Ohio State thing. But listen, stay tuned. Odell's Roundtable will be right back.